Hey guys. Hello. Welcome back to Mommy and Flurry Tale. And today's title and uh, thumbnail you already know from that that we are shooting today finally uh, the Spain related information. We are going to discuss about Spain uh, neutering process and all the details. So please watch till the end so that you know all the details that you need to know. Let's get started. Hey people who are watching this video for the first time, uh, let us introduce ourselves. I'm Sri Deepa and uh, he's Dipanjan. And we are the paw parents of two Shih Tzu babies, Flurry and Kiara. Both are female. Flurry is six years old and uh, Kiara is two and a half years old. Since the time our Kiara got spayed, um, I got many many questions from you guys that please share the cost how is your experience about the entire process how much time did she take to recover from the surgery today we will be discussing all these points and uh, we'll try to be as brief as possible uh, let's start uh, first with uh, what is neutering or what is pain Both of these terms refer uh, to the sterilization of animals. The term spaying specifically refers to the uh, female gender. When you uh, sterilize a female animal, uh, we call it spaying. And uh, uh, neutering is a term which uh, applies for both the genders. Basically, so, neutering is a gender neutral term, so to yes, say. Yes, correct. And spaying is mostly used for female animals. Yes. Yeah. So in Spain, as I said, it is a sterilization of female uh, animal. Here we are discussing about female dogs. So in Spain, uh, the process is removing the reproductive organs or the reproductive system, which includes the reproductive tract, ovaries and uterus. What happens when you sterilize your male dog? It is basically the removal of testicles and the associated uh, organs. So that's about these two processes. Here I want to talk about one particular thing that is whether it is good to do spaying or neutering we are not going to discuss that in this video. Whether you should go for it or not this video is not about uh, that topic at all. We made one previous video where we discussed about Flurry's spaying process and why we decided to spay Flurry. This video is about the information once you decide to spay or neuter your dog the information you should have and you should be aware of, we will be discussing all those points here. So the ne next question that definitely comes to our mind when we decide that whether we are going to do spaying or neutering, whatever it is, uh, when we are generally going to sterilize our pet, uh, what's the right age we think, right? I mean, what you it will be in your mind as well, that what will be the right age? certain things that this is the best age or this is the exact right age you should go for but generally as per the vet suggestion number of vets we have suggested irrespective of the place or the states we are in um, what we came to know that your vet will suggest you to spay your dog or neuter your dog once they go through their at least the first initial hit cycle of their life in terms of female dogs which starts at the age of six months in other countries uh, it is always advised to if you decide to spay your dog and not to uh, breed your dog in future then you are uh, advised to get it done by the time they reach this six months of age now the question that will come to your mind that why there is a difference between what the other part of the world is suggesting versus what the part of India is uh, the rates are in, in India are suggesting and what's the reason that there is a difference of opinion there is definitely a reason behind it in other countries the breeding process and the uh, all the rules and restrictions the breeders are supposed to follow are very rigid and um, completely different from what is followed in India right are, like from yes. starting from breeding to adoption all the processes are very much legally bound so to say and very much process oriented as far as what we have seen mm -hmm. and in India generally uh, there is a process by which the breeders are supposed to get certified for breeding but we hardly see uh, very very like minimal amount of uh, breeders who are certified to do breeding so there are a lot of malpractices and all these things happen and due to which uh, the babies are born so once they are born you need to take care of them so that's why the vets in India 
Is that the correct reason? Correct. Generally, the puppies are given away uh, by the time they are of 45 days old or 50 days old. Mm. So they are not completely nourished. They have not got the complete nourishment which they are supposed to get from the mother dog. That's the reason uh, in India, vets suggest to uh, give your puppy time till six months of age so your puppy's body prepare itself to. Um, be completely ready for the surgery and to take that uh, of course if even if it's a small surgery or a very simple surgery that definitely in, involves some amount of um, anxiousness some pressure some stress so it their body needs to uh, get ready for that it is expected that once they are adopted or they are with a family a loving family they will definitely be uh, getting all the nourishment and love and all the things that they deserve so once we decide that which age to go for the surgery the next question will definitely come to your mind that okay so what are the pre-surgery procedures that uh, you need to follow so pre-surgical process actually I would think about it from two different perspectives one is that you uh, basically get yourself prepared like you get mentally prepared and your baby gets physically um, you know kind of uh, in a position where she can take that surgery so first part is that how you would be preparing yourself it's just that that you need to be a little more confident about uh, your vet whom you are regularly visiting she or he can completely guide you through the process and you don't re really need to worry too much because it's not a very difficult or a very complicated surgery so and from our own experiences we can definitely give that uh, as an our input that um, it's not going to be a complicated process so rest assured make sure that you meet your vet regularly ensure that you are um, ready for your mental well-being and be ready for it there will be no worries so that takes care of the first part the second part is how you will have your pet ready for the uh, for the surgery first and foremost is that you would definitely need to consult with your vet and if uh, your pet is a female obviously you need to discuss about what time she had the last heat cycle what is the gap between your uh, pets regular heat cycles that you have noticed so far if you have and um, whatever are those integrated details that you had about if you know about any any particular medical conditions or any particular behavioral conditions that you have noticed in your pet just as in our case we we already knew that Kiara is a bit shaky without us being around so those kind of very little things that you would know about your pet just like your baby those things you would need to discuss openly much much ahead of the uh, surgery procedure once your vet knows the entire history of your pet in most of the cases you go to the regular vet who is seeing your puppy from the very beginning so based on the hit cycle date that when the hit cycle the last hit cycle got over based on that he or she will suggest you a surgery date once the surgery date is fixed now based on that you will be asked to perform a thorough uh, test blood test yeah mostly. A, a, a set of blood tests mm -hmm. right there will be different vitals that they need to check so it depends right again it will depend on where to where that if your vet knows your pet really really well he might or she might suggest very little amount of tests but whatever it is right once you have fixed the date of the surgery you need to work backwards to fill in those previous uh, you know prerequisites that you need to do before the surgery what you have to do is that you need to get those tests done get those vitals checked normally if uh, your pet's vitals are within the range or bit of fluctuated uh, some very little variance then probably your vet would say that it's fine you can still stick to the date if not if there are major variances or there are major changes in those vitals which are critical then obviously your vet might suggest okay let's push the surgery date by a week or by 10 days depending on how the vitals react so that's what the prerequisites in my mind is that you need to be prepared mentally yourself first because that's one of the major things that we normally um, encourage everyone to do that you get mentally prepared you will only be mentally prepared when you have the exact and entire knowledge about the procedure knowledge doesn't mean you have to know every technical details but it's just the general basic information that as a parent you need to know you should feel free to ask your vet about each and everything without feeling shy or without feeling um, embarrassment that oh, whether it's a very silly question whether it 
this to ask or not so don't take anything casually whatever you have in your mind even if that is a very 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 silly thing to ask please feel free to ask and discuss that with your vet please make yourself in well informed and uh, that will help you uh, to be much more calm and much more uh, confident about this surgery to go for so you need to convince yourself at first and then you need need to collect all the information that you can uh, before you go ahead with this surgery now comes the heart or the crux of the thing is that the surgery the surgery the time on that the it, day on surgery. the day of the surgery so let's say that we have taken kiara so on that day of the surgery or uh, we have taken kiara and pladi or whatever uh, so on that day of the surgery what happens like how long does it take what's the process and what are the things that happen to your pet your pet need to start for 12 hours prior to the surgery on the day of your surgery try to reach the clinic at least an hour before the surgery timing um what happened in kiara's case i will tell you about that uh, because uh, flurry got spayed almost 4 years back yeah. correct so uh, there are many many things that we might not be able to recollect exactly but kiara's case is very recent kiara got spayed in the month of july 6th of july is the exact date so we still remember everything crystal clear we reached the clinic uh, an hour uh, prior to the surgery timing and at first uh, her uh, where the surgery where the incisions will be made uh, firstly that area was shaved uh, and that was shaved all neat and clean and then she was administered with a muscle relaxer i think in another half an hour or so mm. uh, they gave a pre anesthetic uh, drug made her little drowsy and uh, then uh, they gave us another half an hour time uh, to keep kiara relaxed and make her feel really really drowsy and then she was taken to the operation theater where we were definitely not allowed actual surgery but there are like the processes that mm. she was talking about but like just just prior to the surgery Correct. and then the actual surgery process is 20 to 40 minutes and also we uh, vlogged on that day yeah. the surgery day i will put that video link in the description box i mean also put the link uh, in the i button if you click on the i button you will get that video the entire process actually takes around 4 to 4 four and a half hours mm -hmm. if you consider the like what happens before and what happens after Correct. considering the entire thing it will take easily 4 hours you can consider that because you are going to reach there by half an hour one hour before and all those things and even if i recall uh, when flurry was taken into the surgery and when she came out of the operation theater uh, when i took her out it was kind of around that 4 hour period so i think the main surgery process is 20 to 40 minutes as i said but the prior things and the post things kind of add up to the entire time and it will be around Uh, three to four hours. Uh, we will move on to the next part, and that is the post-surgical uh, care. Post-surgical care, mostly what you have seen in our vlogs. If you have, then you would know that what we have gone through and what, uh, like, uh, on a very high level, you, you probably would know. But I will just explain what we have experienced in the post-surgical process. So first thing first is that um, you should. discuss this with your vet that what food oh, wow, what time you can give your uh, pet water and what will be the regular process of uh, dressing and all that right so these are the three major important things apart from the medications right so medications will definitely be there food water pee and poop food or food, pee and poop and definitely the uh, the process of uh, you know the dressing and all that So, what our doctor suggested us to give water after four hours. After four hours, we gave her water. She drank a little, but not much. And then about the food, since she was under antibiotic, and antibiotic actually kind of creates a bit of constipation in pets. So she was given prescription diet. Uh, I think it was IDs prescription hmm, diet. Canned food. Canned food. Um, and it was supposed to be very tasty also the quantity of food and the frequency of uh, giving uh, your dog uh, the food you need to get Discuss all this information that with your vet your because it will depend on the weight the age and all those factors mm -hmm. so how much quantity how many times 
and what food that is something you should be discussing with your vet and they should be telling you what you need to do now they will slowly slowly start eating water start eating food then there will be under medications there could be painkillers there could be antibiotics there could be any supportive medications for any other uh, functions that your vet might think of and then there will be uh, the dressing part so it is possible that some uh, vets might suggest that there will be dressing every day twice a day or every alternate day or maybe um, you know once in maybe every three days five day after or five seven days, days so it depends the whatever the vet suggests just go by that the only thing that i could remember because the medications are pretty much um, depends on where to wait the only thing that i would say is that the tube that we were using vetramel we have shown you in the vlogs you when you when you get your pet from the operation theater there will be a, a initial dressing that will be put on the wound don't try to remove that dressing by yourself until or unless you are advised to do so uh, so for dressing process talk to your vet that when you will be the next dressing um, and based on that go for it we were given a spray medication and we were uh, we were asked not to get it done by ourselves and get it done by a by an expert whom we call the para vets mm. so we got one and he used to come to our home and he used to do the dressing so if you are close to your vets clinic you can definitely take your pet for dressing that's a different thing but in our case our vets clinic and our home was far away uh, now the case is different since we have shifted to a new place one more thing that was that uh, para vet also needs to be in touch with the doctor mm. because in case he sees something in the wound in the in the area where the stitches are he is supposed to let the vet know mm -hmm. so it's not that the para vet will take care of everything so you also need to be careful about that your para vet also needs to be mindful of that fact that anything and anything that happens they should or you should always consult the vet thing is that your para vet is supposed to perform under the supervision of your vet don't go by anything that your para vet suggests stick to the things that your vet has suggested and if you see anything that is that doesn't look so normal or you see some amount of inflammation or anything wrong with the stitches please talk to your vet first don't do anything by yourself or only by the suggestion of the para vet did all that and now people might think that how expensive it is and how costly it is however um the cost and all you can mm -hmm. explain so there is no standard or specific cost that i'll be able to explain first disclaimer because it depends and varies based on weight to weight whether you are uh, doing this uh, surgery in a hospital or whether you are getting it done in a private clinic our channel probably we we have viewers from around the world yes. like we have viewers from us to australia to pakistan to bangladesh and there are a lot, lot of countries malaysia like all over india as well all over india so we cities. have so it's very difficult to just give a price tag to it saying that oh it will take so and so amount and uh, it's not going to be ideal so but just to help you with the information just to give you give you a brief idea uh, the cost uh, part uh, i will uh, distribute it in uh, multiple factors so as we explain the process pre surgical procedures so in the pre surgical procedures we spoke about uh, the blood test uh, the pets test are much more expensive than the humans one mm. since these are niche services that we get there are not many labs in uh, every cities and on so, top of that if you if you book something like home collection and all that obviously we all know right mm. if you do a home collection the charges right. are more if you go to a clinic and get it done the charges are less so whenever you go for a niche thing or a niche service you definitely have to pay more that costed us in our case between 3 to 4k mm. right 3 to 4k inr yeah as we said right country city place everything matters also the clinic whether it's a public clinic private clinic what kind of facilities it has just like any other facility right so it depends it cannot be like given a single number in kiara's case as i mentioned let me tell you the other proce uh, procedure that was performed is umbilical hernia kiara was born with umbilical hernia and that was fixed during the staying process so normally the staying process uh, will be between 5 to 10k in india as far as we know 
because we have other friends also in other parts of the city, uh, country so between 5k to 10k would be your typical cost for the spaying surgery. process spaying surgery obviously if you have some other surgeries it will cost you more so but do not ask us in terms of what cost it took for you because you should definitely go and check with the vet it depends on vet and the surgical process that they are going to take but if you want to take a number in your head and you are so determined to have a number in your head then it will be somewhere between 5 to 10k the cost for the post surgery is definitely going to be depending on the medications uh, your um, then your how many times you are having the the dressing done, dressing done. Um, and then if the dressing is done by your parapet then obviously the parapets charge because if he is coming to your home and doing it at your home obviously any private service at home uh, and a personal service obviously will cost you more it will be somewhere around like you know, like 5k hmm. 5k okay. yeah so it will be somewhere around 5k including the medicines and if the parapet is coming at your home and doing it the dressing and all at your home then it will be somewhere around 5k uh, now coming to the points that what you should do and what you should not do at all. What you should do as we mentioned you need to prepare yourself and you need to prepare your pet for the surgery and also for that you need to get proper information that we have already covered and so now coming to the point what you should not do. The first thing panicking. Don't panic. Anything that happens don't panic. Have trust on your vet and as i said be and have very trust very on your pet also <laughs> that he or she also will be able to handle it so be very very thorough when you ask your vets all the question that you have in your mind so here um, as he said that it's a very simple and a very common procedure so definitely as parents we will definitely need to know that how, how long how long the incision will be how deep the incision will be so let me give you a very brief idea that our vet as our vet explained us uh, before we decided to go for the surgery so in uh, case of neutering and spaying a small incision uh, will be made just below the belly button and uh, in Kiera's case it was one and a half inches the incision and uh, a little more due to uh, because she had hernia and that was removed uh, with the surgery but normally in case of spaying or neutering it is one and a half to two inches incision it's a three layer uh, incision both layers below the skin surface um, there will be absorbable uh, sutures that will be absorbed in their body and uh, on the top layer there will be sutures which needs to be removed after 15 days of the surgery so this also depends from bed to bed uh, some says that they can remove the suture in seven days and in some places it is 15 days in our case it was 15 days it's not a very big or a very serious surgery only but when it's a surgery with sutures but there are there is another way by this surgery is done laparoscopic. very very few places in india probably the laparoscopic surgery that is also a that's, very expensive that's process. also a very expensive process and uh, that happens in very few places in india i believe uh, so like for that that's a that's completely a different process we don't have much idea about it that that also is, is a thing that happens all the reason uh, you get to panic uh, not ends here definitely there are more to it after the surgery the healing process might take a little longer in case of your pet because it depends on the many different factors that what age your pet is going for the surgery also what are the additional health condition your pet has behavioral, behavioral uh, stability your pet has mm -hmm. like in our case Kiara's healing time was little longer than Flurry's uh, our vet said in the very beginning that Kiara's skin is very very thin. We were asked to take uh, proper care of Kiara. We were advised not to let her run, jump or do anything and also definitely after the surgery there will be uh, different things like you might notice constipation, you might notice that they are not peeing uh, in the normal frequency that they used to do. So don't panic, these are all normal since your pet has gone through a surgery and any surgery that is definitely stressful for pet or for humans. So definitely there will be small little impacts on your pet and um, there there can be mood swings there can be constipation there can be uh, loss of appetite there can be many many things so do not panic these are all normal talk to your vet be in touch with your vet and uh, just do things as he or she suggests so at the end of it all right and 
this is something which really comes from the bottom of my heart that whether be it Flurry, be it Kiara, our vets and the places where we have been, we have been extremely lucky that we have had such nice people around us who has guided us, helped us, shared the knowledge with us and shared some real deep insights with us very easily and helped us through the process to grow with the with the situation right um, so on that note i would really really thank uh, our vet who was in bangalore dr pampapati um, the place where flurry got uh, spayed which was um, cessna. cessna veterinary clinic and definitely definitely dr krishano ghosh in salt lake and in newtown in kolkata so Dr. Ghosh had been really good because we were very new to him uh, because we, we, we have been seeing Dr. Pampapati for all this while but Dr. Ghosh has really taken care of Kira like anything like I remember I had like put some whatsapp messages to him like really late at night she, he has always responded attended to calls like really extremely happy that he had been with us all this while Dr. Pampapati had always been like our guide and um, so as Dr. Ghosh now. Correct. So. And with that we end this video here. Yes. I hope we have covered everything but if uh, you think that we have missed out on something please feel free to ask in the comment section we'll definitely reply and also if you can share your experiences that will be great for us and also great do for watch us for friends. the next vlogs because those are going to be really really interesting so with that we are ending today's video Flaru and Flaru QQ one. and oh. Dipanjan and Sridipa we are signing off today oh. so we'll see you guys in the next vlog very very soon Till then, stay happy, stay awesome. Bye-bye. <laughs>